welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Ed, aka Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. We're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. Hello, Savage Tech Man, a.k.a. Ed here, along with Scott Schreiber. Hey, hey. Hey, welcome back. And this is going to be a special series that we're doing for the 90th Oscars coming up. And uh, from the recording of this, it's this Sunday coming up uh, in March here. So we're going to do separate episodes, um, five different parts. Yeah, that nice five-part series. We'll break each uh, part down to maybe about four categories a piece. And so it's like nice digestible pieces for you get, uh, you listeners out there. Hopefully, hopefully we're aiming for like 15-minute episodes, so a little bit shorter than usual. And they're on specific awards specific <laughs> categories right we'll have theme, themes to each night tonight uh, we'll ultimately focus on the design awards makeup costume production design but we're going to hit the fringe categories first the the short films documentary and uh, foreign and we'll just kind of touch right. on those a little bit before moving on to the design awards tonight and also you can check out our blog you've been writing uh, daily blogs Yes, for sir. this, so over this period of time leading up to the Oscars, Scott's done some very detailed. He's returned to us again this year to do it, but this year he's broke it down just like the podcast. This, these podcasts are gonna uh, and the series are gonna break them down too. But more information at geekhomeworld.blogspot.com. So you'll see us on our social media at Geek Home World on Twitter. So just follow us there because we're going to be posting in our Facebook page and different things. So a lot of fun going on. So we're excited about the Oscars and uh, we're in the movie industry, both of us. And this is an exciting time for it us. It is, and, absolutely. Yeah. And who knows what the future holds. And what we're talking about in part one here is design, feature, and shorts. And um, we've done a lot of short movies. <laughs> we've done some shorts and all that. Not Academy caliber, maybe, but... No, uh, no. Some that maybe one day. Maybe, you know, yeah, absolutely. You know the beginnings of, so we're just getting our feet wet there. But uh, we're going to start off with Best Animated Short Film. Yeah, we'll, we'll quickly go over these. I know most people haven't seen these. They don't come to the theaters unless you got a specialty theater. But the uh, Animated Short Film, uh, these uh, will go... We'll just go over who we think we're going to win. We won't go into too much detail here. An animated short film, I think, is going to go to a film called Deer Basketball, produced and actually written by Kobe Bryant. Um, it seems to be the front runner right now. He started this production company when he retired from the Lakers. Okay. And uh, the, the short film actually is animated to a poem he wrote about basketball. So, and I, Interesting. It, it seems like it's... Uh, from the buzz that I hear, that it's the front runner. Um, yeah, so, but, but I went to a garden party. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know. No, uh, and and you never know. I mean, these are like if you're trying to win your Oscar pool, these are the ones you want to get right. So I, I hope I'm leading everybody in the right direction. Uh, so I think Dear Basketball will take animated short film okay. for live action short film. I think that uh, the Academy is going to go topical. Um, DeKalb Elementary is actually a short film inspired by an actual 911 call placed during a school shooting in Atlanta, Georgia. Wow. So, so that's very Very timely. topical, timely, yeah. relevant to today. So yes. I, I, I feel like the voting is going to go that way for live action short film. So uh, mark in DeKalb uh, Elementary as your winner for live action short film. And um, then uh, go, go for best, it. I'm sorry. Best documentary short subject. I'm going with traffic stop. Okay, and I think that it's makes kind of topical. Sure. And and the Academy Awards are political. Yeah. And absolutely. I think this year there, there's no reason to think they wouldn't be as political. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wish sometimes the politics wasn't part of some of the decisions, and I'm not saying it always is, but I don't know. They tend to. You're right on that. You're walking and a line, you, you know, either way. Uh, 
Yeah, you want a film to win on merit instead of the politics, but uh, mm -hmm. you know you you, you kind of understand it. Vote that it is voting, and voting is political. <laughs> and your next American Idol is <laughs> so yes. Traffic yeah. stop seems like a good one. Um, from what I've uh, been hearing, Heaven as a Traffic Jam on the four or five is maybe the front runner. Sounds like Atlanta Traffic. I'm yeah. just guessing. Yeah, well, it's about mental disorders, so you. You oh. know, um, not <laughs> not quite. Sorry. And then the heroin is also actually heroin's the uh, is is available on Netflix if you uh, want to watch it. It's about yes. the opioid epidemic. That is actually one that could Very sneak topical. in there too. These are these are powerful subjects. They're so, you know, next level. So flip a coin on that one. That's a tough one, but yeah. uh, but maybe uh, it could be you know maybe you're right there. Traffic stop or heaven is traffic jam. Traffic. Traffic is the theme there. Traffic, traffic is the theme. Just vote on traffic. We're all trying to get someplace in life, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And there's always an obstacle we have to overcome. Now, best foreign language film of the year. I'm going to let you take the lead on that. Sure. I I, I think the winner is going to be A Fantastic Woman. Um, it's another politically, socially charged film relevant to today's times. It's about a transgender woman mm -hmm. uh, that uh, has a relationship with an older man. The man dies, and then the family, you know, basically wants nothing to do with her or recognize their relationship. You know, they don't. And so, right. so I think this is another timely film. It's getting great reviews. The lead uh, actress has gotten great reviews. So I, I think people are going to lean in that direction. I know that when we went to film school, um, our instructor was telling us a lot about comedies and comedies are, are hard to do, but I've always wanted to do more serious films and I've been involved with some shorts that were very serious in a feature film. And if you notice, there's really no comedies in here. They're mostly very poignant movies, and you know, typically very with, stark. Yeah, and that's absolutely. usually how it runs. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. So. And then, and there, it's no different when you get to a documentary feature. Uh, yeah, uh, we've got a lot of different ones there. I'm kind of going with Icarus. I, I could see that winning. I think mm -hmm. that that one is for me, and I think it's. It's the number two one that might get there. Mm -hmm. I really think Faces Places is going to win this. It's uh, or Visages Villages. <laughs> it's a French documentary, but yeah. it's it's getting incredible reviews. It's about a, okay. a photographer and a other French photographer, French uh, filmmaker. They go mm -hmm. on the road in France and they set up a portable photo booth and oh, take pictures yeah. of people and meet the, the people, and then they make murals after it. After they meet the and that are inspired by these great people and places that they've met and experienced, so um, I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, right. No, it sounds like a great, you know, great experience. So I, I do Good think concept. that's the front runner. But Icarus, you're right. It has to do with Russian doping and the politics there. Another topical issue. <laughs> yeah, everything and, is from the news or in the news or <laughs> yeah. And that one actually is available on Netflix as well. Uh, Netflix well, promotion. Huh? <laughs> Where's my Where's my uh, yeah. <laughs> Where's my uh, cut? <laughs> speaking of cut, ha ha ha. Uh, best achievement in makeup and hairstyling. I thought that would be me, but definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, um, uh, just quickly, I will say about documentary, I think yes. there were two two great documentaries this year that were snubbed. There's one about Jane Goodall called Jane that oh, was yeah. amazing. Found footage from her first trip uh to study the you know the chimpanzees and amazing amazing lady it amazing. was so well done She's and then done another life. Netflix documentary called Andy and Jim about Jim Carrey playing Andy Kaufman on Man on the Moon it is a fascinating character study of hmm. you know of just what it is to be a meta actor um, those two I thought were kind of just forgotten about unfortunately but uh, you know the 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 Academy you know does what they do. <laughs> When I was looking at a lot of these, and when we get to some of the other episodes, it gets harder when we get to Best Actor, Best oh, Picture, sure. and, and all that. But in uh, makeup and hairstyling, this one could go different ways. There's, uh, well, there's Darkest Hour that's nominated. Um, I can see, you know, transforming Gary Oldman into where he just gets lost in that performance of Winston Churchill that, you know, I can see... It winning for that. Mm -hmm. Me, Victorian Abdul, I love that movie. And 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 with Jame, Jame, Dame, <laughs> Dame Judy, Judy Dench. Dench. Sorry there. Um, 
the period costumes for me were so intricate and so so much detail there and I could But oh, that's that's costume. That is that's where like I yes, and I said true. in the I said in my blog that I completely understand Victoria and Abdul's nomination in the costume department. Mm -hmm. I don't understand it here, honestly. I it's Judy Dench plays Queen Victoria, mm -hmm. who's actually was much well not much younger, but was younger at that the time that it was supposed to be set was younger than than Judy Dench actually is, and they they changed the time period and to yeah. to match her age, which I thought was really weird. But I, I didn't see much makeup going on. She's you know not for I, her. No, per se, so I, so I was a little confused by that. The for, third, yeah, the, the yeah, third the nominee will win. I think I I, I disagree, but and that's wonder. wonder. I think because just the the prosthetics or the face and this is about the little kid that has the I don't want to call it deformity. Well he was born proper, yeah. Sure. I mean he was born with a facial you know It reminds me of the movie Mask. Yes, Cher. absolutely. Yeah, you Eric know, Stoltz, I feel like yeah. it's a, another version of that. It is. And I don't know, I could see it for that, but um, Like I get it. Like I, I they the filmmakers they originally thought about shooting it in a POV you know, just from his perspective and not showing his face. And then he's like, no, let's be brave. Let's show his face. Right. Let's, let's hit it head on. And so I respect that. And I think they did a mm -hmm. really good job. And you wouldn't think, you wouldn't even know it was Jacob Tremblay, the kid from Room. Yeah. And, and so, you know, they did do a great job. But honestly, there's no beating Darkest Hour here. It will not lose this award. Uh, <laughs> I, can't, the, <laughs> I can't really disagree with you on that. I, you know, because... Here's here's the thing, Kazuhiro Tsuji. I want. I hope I'm saying that right. He's a really respected makeup artist. Mm -hmm. He hadn't worked in five years. He'd been on a long hiatus, and he was talked into coming back just to do this. And it's his third nomination. He did Click and Norbit. <laughs> so he was he did Norbit. And Norbit. So he oh, was nominated oh, for those dear. two. He also did How the Grinch Stole you Christmas. Just, you just made me get sick right there. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to spit up. Well, well his, his, his credits are fantastic. Well, his makeup credits are fantastic. Yeah. And like The How the Grinch Stole Christmas, uh, the 2001 mm -hmm. Planet of the Apes, Hellboy, uh, okay. Case of Benjamin Button, uh, wow. Curious Case of Benjamin Button, Looper. Um, I love and, Looper. Yeah, so, such an underrated movie. So I think that he's never won. This is his third nomination. He comes back from a hiatus to do this, and the the transformation for into Churchill is, All right, is amazing. You make a good case, and I'm agreeing with there you. There we go. <laughs> All right, then I'm right. So we move on to costume. <laughs> uh, yeah, best achievement in costume design. Uh, the, the the nominees are Beauty and the Beast, Darkest Hour, Phantom Thread, Shape of Water, and Victorian Abdul. Yes. Now, I'm going to skip down and say Victoria and Abdul had some really good period piece costumes. Absolutely. And the, but, the costume designer there, uh, she had done the Queen and Florence Foster Jenkins. She'd worked with Stephen Frears before, and you know they obviously have a great collaboration. Um, Shape of Order with the main character in that, the costume. I'm sure it was very intricate to make, blah, blah, blah. But I'm really feeling, and you're probably going to say Darkest Hour on this one, I don't know, but Beauty and the Beast, and this is, there's a pro and a con to it. To it. It's Disney, so, you know, it's got that power behind it. And right. it was a beautiful movie. Right. It was, I think it lived up to, if you've ever seen the live shows, the live shows at, at Disney in Florida are just spectacular. And, and honestly, it's one of my favorite things to do when I go to Disney. Yeah. And... um because it's just so well done. And the only thing I think that could hurt its chances that, that it was too mainstream. Well, I, I would you know? personally vote for Beauty and the Beast. I think one thing that it's got going against it is the costume designer. She's nominated for Darkest Hour as well. If you notice that, the same name right sure, there. Sure, yes. So she may split her own votes there. These are her fifth and sixth nominations of all time. She's won one already for Anna Karenina. So I kind of feel like, well, I think I think the where this is going, 
because costume is so intricate to the plot of Phantom Thread, right. Phantom Thread is going to win this. And it's Mark Bridges, his third nomination. He won for The Artist, and he was nominated for Inherent Vice as well, another Paul Thomas Anderson film. But I think that the costumes are so intricate to that story and so important to the story that it's going to win. Okay. And even though I would vote for Beauty and the Beast. But uh, but wouldn't it suck if you got nominated for two movies you did and didn't win? I mean, that happens yeah, in happens, another category we'll sure, talk about. It happens a lot, yeah. An extra episode, you know, we've got, we've got the same issue coming up. And, and on there, I address the fact that I think they could just say, okay, you got two nominations. Let's give it to someone else. Right. You know, so I mean, to be doubly nominated in the same year is pretty cool. I think that's almost as good as winning, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> two of those equal one Oscar. Um, so our our last one that we have um, is best achievement in production design. Uh, Beauty yes. and the Beast, Blade Runner twenty forty nine, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk, Shape of Water, and I'm just going straight to Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Yep, that I I, do, I honestly actually I think it's not going to win. I, I have that fear because I, it's kind of sci fi and it was. Well, I don't know if the really the genre has much to do with it. I think just the fact should. that the Shape of Water is is like the Academy's favorite it's film. It's darling, nominated yeah. the most. And I feel like this is one of those where they say, okay, we're going to give it. And it deserves it. It's a great look to the film. It's am- it, is. it is amazing. Amazing look. But, I, again, it's like production design of Blade Runner. I mean, come on. How do you <laughs> – how does that lose? I don't get it. But uh, maybe – I don't know. Maybe because uh, the people – or Dennis Gasner, who is the production designer, he's been nominated more than anybody in this category. Mm-hmm. And he's won already for Bugsy. Um, so, you know, sometimes that affects it and all the, the, the nominees for Shape of Water have never been nominated. And I feel like, you know, sometimes people there, like that. There's a feeling that Dunkirk, between Dunkirk, I feel like this could be the year of Dunkirk, but it could easily be the year of the Shape of Water. It's, there's so many good ones. Uh, right, which is great billboards. because usually things are pretty clear cut. Like, yeah. you know who's going to win. But I think this year in a lot of categories, like Titanic, when it came along, and, and Return well, of the King, especially like Best Picture this year. Yeah. Like usually, you know, you know, it's going to be right. one, maybe another one slips in. But, but I'd that, say there are at least three or four movies this year that right. have a chance at winning, which and is exciting. And we're going to talk about that on a yes, future one. We of these, will get to that <laughs> uh, mini episodes or whatever you want to call them. So that brings us actually to the end of it, uh, and. We end, need you to look end out of part for, one. Well, please, part one. Please flip tape. <laughs> yeah, please flip your your mixtape over, or whatever. But our next one coming up, just to preview it, is going to be part two of our Oscar '90s Academy Award 2018 special. It's going to be on my favorite topic, sound. Yeah, we'll so. th- we'll throw in music and sound, and uh, yes, we'll do score, song, exactly, yeah. sound mixing and sound editing. So Good if you stuff. can if you can hear it, we're going to talk about it. Absolutely. So. All right, so we'll see you for the next one. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow and interact with us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes and leave a review, subscribe to us on YouTube, read our thoughts on Blogger. See you again on the Geek Homeworld.